Hey everyone, Pastor Shane here, and uh, coming today to do something a little bit new and different. Every now and then some topics come up, um, people ask questions about things that are worth talking about, but don't necessarily mean that something we should put a whole sermon towards. So we thought every now and then we would just do a video, a short video that we can post uh, to kind of deal with some of those questions. And today I want to talk about something that came up based on a sermon a couple of weeks ago, um, where I had talked about that humans are the only ones in the Bibles that we see who have souls. And that's led people to ask the question of, are there animals in heaven? So I just want to deal with that for a minute. Um, you know, I've had dogs for most of my life. Tanya and I have actually had a couple dogs our entire marriage. Um, we've always had at least two. And um, we've been blessed that most of our dogs have had very healthy and, and happy, long, full lives. Um, and they've brought us a lot of joy, companionship, and fun throughout the years. Um, now, we've also had some cats, uh, fish, and even a couple of pet rats, if you uh, believe it or not. Uh, but I got to say, none of those have brought us as much joy as the dogs. Sorry for you cat owners. Um, but, you know, we live in a culture that loves our pets. And as a result, the question often arises, will I see my pet in heaven? Now, I have my own opinions on this, but the truth is that we really don't know. The Bible isn't really clear on the matter. Um, but there are some things that we can look at that will give us some insights and maybe help us understand this a little bit better. So I want to look at some of these things and, um, and deal with it. Um, you know, the first thing to ask ourselves is, are there animals in heaven? Well, the Bible actually seems to indicate that there are animals in heaven. Uh, here's a reading from Isaiah chapter 10, starting in verse 6. It says, The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf of the lion and um, the fattened calf together. And the little child shall lead them. A cow and a bear shall graze their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the wean child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurry, I mean, sorry, they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So you see, it seems to indicate that once when the earth is restored and when when we are in heaven, God's paradise, that when we have the full knowledge of the Lord throughout the earth, that all creatures will be able to live in harmony together. Um, we also know that there were animals in the Garden of Eden, which was meant to be a representation of the paradise of heaven. So it does seem to indicate that the Bible shows that there will be animals in heaven. So then the question is, are the animals that are there, are they ones that were here on earth that have died and God brought to heaven? Um, or have are they animals that God just created for heaven, a new, newly created animals? Well, there's four things I'd like us to look at to understand that. Um, and the first is this. Do animals have a soul? You know, I think there um, are a few things to consider in answering this question. Um, most Bible scholars would say no, that animals don't have a soul. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned this in Genesis chapter 2. It says that, Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. And that word for breathe life into the man is the word for soul. <clears throat> that God breathed soul into humans, and we're the only animal that God did that with. The other aspect of this is we're the only animals created in the image of God. Um, so it would follow suit that since God is an eternal being, we too as humans are eternal beings. Um, but most Bible scholars would agree that no other animals are eternal beings because they're not made in the image of God and because they don't have a soul. That They are simply physical beings that are put here on this earth. 
Now, another thing to consider, though, with this is that we also know that God's creation, much of it is not just for the, for the sole purpose of purpose. It's also for pleasure and to bring glory to God. And animals do that. And it also means that God's creation is not just for his pleasure, but for ours. You know, we talked last week in our sermon about how God desires to give his children good gifts. You know, as, as his children, he wants to bless us and animals bless us every day here on this earth. Um, and if it makes sense that God would want to bless us here on this earth, that he would probably also want to bless us in heaven with some of these same things. Our animals bring us great joy and pleasure here on earth. And so it could be that God would give us those animals in heaven to bring us that same joy and pleasure in heaven. We don't know. Um, now that said, I'm just going to give you a couple of my personal thoughts for you to think about. Um, you don't have to agree with these thoughts, um, but these are some things that help form my opinion on the matter. <clears throat> One is that the Bible says that we're not, we're not even going to marry in heaven. You know, Jesus says at the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like angels in heaven. Well, you know, in my life, no other relationship has brought me more joy and have I found more important than my relationship with my wife, Tanya. Um, and at least if we're going to take Jesus literally in his word here, um, he's saying that I'm not going to have her in that relationship anymore when I'm in heaven. Now, I could choose to see this as God taking something from me important, um, or I can trust that if God doesn't feel that I need spouses in heaven, it's because I won't have a need for her as, as, a, as a spouse at least. Um, but whatever the reason... I trust that God is going to fill whatever needs and whatever desires I have here on this earth, that I will no longer have those in heaven. Another thing I think that we have to think about is why is it so important that we have our animals in heaven? I mean, once again, I mean, if I, I would love to have my wife and, and God saying I'm not going to have her, why is it so important that we have our animals in heaven? Um, you know, there are are religions that focus on the fat on other things in heaven. They focus that when we go to heaven, it's not about Jesus. It's on having our relationships or having our family or having other things. They take the focus off of Jesus. I personally believe our goal of heaven should be to be eternally connected with Jesus. That should be the number one most important thing. And then we just trust him for the rest. So when we, when we want our animals in heaven, it's one thing to want it, but how important is it to us? I don't think our faith in any way should be connected to that. Another thing that has informed my decision, my um, beliefs on this <coughs> is my traveling to other cultures. You know, over the last 35 years, I've spent a, a lot of time going to developing countries. And in other countries, there are children would love to have the kinds of beds that our dogs sleep on here in America. Many of the children would love to eat the food um, that we feed our animals. Um, they would gladly eat the designer dog treats that people buy nowadays. Um, and so it makes me hard, it makes it very hard for me um, to see this at times. And, and I don't have a problem with people spending money on animals like this. Um, I mean, after all, I spend money on things I love and enjoy, um, like my motorcycle or going on vacation. But my struggle is when we see the animals as equally important as humans. And I fear that we're becoming a culture that's thinking might be leaning in that direction. And then finally, I would just say we have to be careful. We have to be careful not to idolize what God has given us. Anything, that gift that God has given us that brings us pleasure, um, if we're not careful, we can let that gift become, become something that we idolize. And I, I get worried that sometimes our culture is beginning to do that with animals. Well, let me just close with this. Um, I gave us a few things to think about as far as uh, what the Bible says about 
um, our souls and, and um, the, being eternal beings, um, but also seems to indicate there are going to be animals in heaven. Um, I give you my views and some things I think, but I want to remind you, we don't all have to agree on those things. As we often say, um, there are some key essentials in the Bible that we want to be um, abundantly clear about and things that we say, hey, this, this is who we are. This is what we have to, we need to believe to be Bible um, believing Christ following um, people. But on those things, we find unity. But in everything else, it's open for discussion. And it's open for us to have different ideas on it. So I'd be happy to hear and see, read some of your thoughts and ideas and comments on this. Um, and I look forward to seeing them. Thanks. Thanks.